Now I've covered some things out on the software end. Now we're going to go out into the shop and simulate what's going to happen on the machine with the training there. Now I've got a simple part that uh, we're going to look at just to see some things. And uh, I am doing a remote desktop session. So uh, the screen may lag a little bit, but uh, hopefully you'll still uh, get everything intended out of this training session. So first thing I'm going to do is go open. And everything on the bottom here, F1, F2, they're all, all these F keys work as well as using your mouse. So you can just use an F key instead. But I'm going to go open. And I'm just going to grab a shop cart top, open. And it gives me a little message here about, uh, you know, you can type in whatever you want. So when the operator opens this up, it'll be something that he'll see that he will then be able to, uh, you know, maybe there's a note on there, you know, certain way to handle a part, something to watch for, quality requirements, anything you want you can put in there and they have to acknowledge that when they open it. Okay, first thing it's going to do, it's going to dump us off in the technology area. So we go right there, we can look at our part. I see already there's a couple bend sequence problems. I'm not sure why. But we could look into that and see, you know, what's going on. I can go back to my bending. I can click on each bend and, and see where the problem's going to be. So it looks like it's it's showing there could be a collision there. So I'm not sure what, what it's going to do, but... Uh, you know, that's what it's showing there. Another thing while we're looking at this here, uh, there's some things I can turn on in the options. There's, uh, you know, tooling. There's, uh, yeah, I can change my units of measurement. I can go into, uh, go to my different areas this way as well if you don't want to hit the F keys. Um, I would recommend just using the F keys. It's a lot easier. And F12 gets you out of everything. So if you're ever in a problem, think F12. So this here, we can also just say, you know, let the machine do the automatic technology. We'll say, you know what, maybe it would crash here and it is going to be a problem. Let's go ahead and let it do the automatic technology. And it's going to run through. Okay, it tells me it's got a collision on the Z-axis. Then it's got a uh, CNC Z's out of limits, process 3, process 1. So it gives me all kinds of problems there. It's a pretty simple part. I'm not sure what, but I'm going to hit Compute Z-Axis, see if it's able to fix it on its own. It's not. So we'll go in there and see uh, exactly what's going on. So it looks good here. In the bending, it's green. We've got a couple things here. It thinks it might have a collision. Uh, I'm sure with these side flanges, the back gauges are good to go. Uh, we can adjust all this as well. You know, I'm going to go back through. Uh, I didn't have anything rehearsed or written down, so I may be jumping around a bit, but I'll try not to. But I can click on this step three, and if I hold down the shift button, and then I use my arrow key, I can move that bend around. It's going to say, hey, this is going to collide. I can accept that or deny it. It's going to say, you know, afterwards it's going to collide. I can say accept that or deny it. Now it gives me three problems. Uh, you know, I can put that back by shift and arrow up again. Then it's going to tell me, hey, we're going to have a problem there again. But uh, I don't think it's going to be an issue, so I'm going to go ahead and let that go. It's just a warning. You know, that our finger's there. I can do it manually. The easiest way is just to let the computer do it itself. So I hit the automatic back gauge. It comes up with a solution for all the bends. So I've got here, I see the 13 right there. I've got, uh, that's that's the edge that it's going to try to find. So it's going to go to edge 13. Then on this bend here, it's going to use edge 4. Then on the, we'll go to the third bend. So we've got the third bend here. Then I've got uh, edge 10. And then for the final bend, we're going to go to edge 7. We don't have the lifting option support, so I can't show you how that works. The next thing, though, is going to be the tool plan layout. And uh, we'll see if we can come up with a tool plan setting. So I've got the 34-inch uh, the flanges, and then we've got a 43-inch flange. So 
we can go through and look at all these as well. There's bend one, as you can see there. So then we go into bend two, which basically it just flips the part around. Then I go to bend three, and then into bend four, which is going to finalize and close that part. You know, I've got different things here. I've got my uh, back gauge settings, the angles, the width of the flange, things like that. I've got my tooling, my top tool, my bottom tool that it's telling me I'm going to use. I can edit this as well. I can just say, you know, edit the tooling plan. I can go in here. I can change all these things up. I can click on this line item. Say I wanted to put a space in there, you know, for a flange. Say there was a flange that we could interact with a tool. I can either add a segment, it's going to put it at the bottom. I can insert a blank segment, which is going to put it on uh, right above where, I, where I'm clicked. So say I want to put a space in between these two 515 millimeter tools, I can do that. I can just click on this one. I'm going to say insert a blank segment. It gives me a gap there. And say I wanted to put a five millimeter gap right there. And that'd be enough to uh, get the material through there if I had a flange that had to guide through. Just a little trick that uh, can possibly help you out. Then I go down to my last step here. And I can go through here and see everything needed. So Generally I don't do a whole lot in this area so I'm just going to skip through that. You can run a simulation if you want but typically I just want to get through to the next one so I can hit F8 or click the next button. Now I'm basically at the machine's control. This is the screen that you'll see whenever you're bending apart. So I can see here I had a uh, deviation in this part. This is a part that's already been saved so the next time it comes up uh, you should be able to make a good part first time. So I've got my tooling, tells me where my tooling goes. I've got kind of everything here. If I'm not sure I can pull up my tool setting plan again and that'll tell me exactly which tools, tell me where they go. So then I can back out of there with the F12 key. So I can make adjustments. In the adjustment tab I can kind of correct certain things here. I can go back into processing to look at my processing screen. I can go into corrections. Now in corrections there's uh, a few things I can do here. If I wanted to move uh, you know, Y1, Y2, I can change that manually, but uh, I tell you what, there's a better way to do it, is do it over here. So Y1 would be the left, anything with a 2 would be on the right. So Y1 would be left, Y2 would be right. Uh, say if my angle on the left was 90 degrees, but my angle on the right was 89 and a half, I would just type in exactly what I'm saying, and that's going to make my correction right there. So as I move into a different area, uh, my correction will show up. So then after I would make my angle correction, I can just tell it if I want to do a process. I can say I want to parallel, I want to do the whole part. You know, I can just do this process there and it changes my uh, deviation. I've got my switch over point, which is where the tools are going to take over. and. Uh, do the different settings. I've got my clamping point which is where it's going to actually physically clamp the material for the back gauges to take over. I can adjust this if say it's a really big part and I want to squeeze a little harder or maybe it's a little tiny part. I don't want to squeeze quite as hard before the back gauge gets out of the way and it starts doing its thing. So I've got my top dead center which is where it's going to open up at the end of the bend. So if I had a a big flange that I need to get out of there, I can change this number. I can change it to four inches if I wanted. So I've got my return tra traverse. You, know, you got settings for this on end position on the fly. My starter peripherals. So as soon as as soon as it clamps the part, that's when it's going to start moving the back gauge or doing anything else. I can have it clamp and do a delay. I can have it not do anything until the top dead center. So I've got my bend up speed. I usually leave this maxed out. I've got my bend down speed. If it's a really big part, I can slow this down. I can, you know, say I want to do it at five inches a minute. I can slow it way down. Should, always shows your correction over here, which is real nice. 
uh, my pressing force uh, it'll use up to 37 tons on this you can change it if you wanted to but it's still not gonna use any more than it has to I've got a dwell time if I wanted to sit at the bottom I could say you know what I want to sit at the bottom for one second maybe I you know want to reposition or something I can also do click this and I've got it it'll stop at the very bottom and default crowning factor is one. If I find that maybe my part isn't quite getting crowned correctly, I can change this. They recommend always going in a 0.1 increment, so I can change it to 1.1, try that, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, and so on. You know, if I want to move my back gauges, I can move them independently, one or two. I can move them as a whole group. So you, you have a lot of different uh, things there you can adjust for. I can also move my Y axis, I can move the RB axis, the ZB, so anything else. Uh, most part I think you probably want to move them as a group. So if I were to say I wanted to move XB, uh, you know, half inch, there, just move both of them in the deviation fields here, you can see that they're both moved a half an inch. And then it always changes the back to this. So I can go minus 0.5, and now it's going to move them back to where they originally were. You can see that there. I can delete all the corrections in this part. If I said, you know what, I'm gonna start over here, I got new material or something. There, I just deleted all the corrections made to the part. Now it's like starting from scratch. And again, I could hit F12 and back out of here. Come back to this view. I can go into the uh, numerical view. You're kind of an old school press brake operator. You can look at everything here. It's kind of the same screen we're just at, but this one will continue to use when you run. Some different things. Uh, some things that we've already covered are still in here. We can go to uh, you know box bending is real good if you have a flange that's going to come up and intersect and block the camera for the uh, safety protection. You can do a box so as long as the back of the die is still open it allow it to continue at a high speed until it reaches the bend point. I can put in a cycle counter in here. Uh, say I want to skip this bend altogether. I can change this to zero. Now when I run my program, it's going to skip step one. I can change this to, to five. And when I run the program, it'll run this five times. I can do a parts counter. So I can put this back at one. And I can put a parts counter in there. Say I want to run ten pieces and I want the machine to cut off. Yeah. It's a uh, there, I put in 10, but it cut off because I'm already at 18. So if I said I want 20, it's going to run me two more pieces, and then the machine's going to stop. You can put in zero if, if uh, you don't want to get anything in there, one or you know however you want, however many you want. Not sure what happened there. My uh, screen just popped up with the, another program there. I'm going to back out of this, get back into here. Now when I'm running apart, if my angle's off, I can change that right here. I can just say, you know what, this angle I just measured came in at 92 degrees. If I hit the tab key or enter key, it's going to accept it just for that bend. But if I wanted to go in and say, you know what, it's still 92, and now I got the option down here, if I don't hit anything else, I can say parallel, which is going to pick this angle and this angle and it just accepted something because I clicked. So I'm going to change this again. I'm going to say 80, 85 to get it back where it was. And now I can say, uh, go back in here without hitting keystrokes. So now if I don't click anything, I've got parallel or part. Part will do the entire part. Parallel will just do everything in that uh, length of the part in that direction, that bend sequence in that direction. So you've got a couple options there. So I can go and set my part.